I'm Adam Kennan from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Today I'm going to tie up the Spawn Craw for Southern Culture on the Fly. I tie them on Gamagatsu B10S number twos. I'm using Danville 210. Start out your thread. You want to leave your thread hanging just at the barb of the hook. I'm using Loctite super glue with the ultra gel control. I put a dab right where the eye should be. Then I'm going to use medium bead chain eyes. Went ahead and clip those off the chain. You're going to place them right where your glue is. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wraps there. Three the other way again. Three the other way again. Then wrap underneath the eyes. Bring your thread around. And you're going to stop at the hook point. Next thing you're going to need, three millimeter glass rattles. I like to take a little glue, put it right there. Leave yourself a little gap between the rattle and the eye. Start out with some loose wraps. Get tighter as you go. Three times down and back. Secure your rattle, get it in place. Sometimes they move around on you. Leave your thread right there behind the eyes. Next thing you want to grab is some marabou. I'm using Nature Spirit Fish Hunter. Grab a single piece. Take it and pull off about half of a feather there. Pinch it together. Get about 20 or 30 feathers of marabou. And wet it. Start it right there on the side of your hook, in between the rattle and the eyes. Then you want to come over in front of the eyes there. Wrap it three times. Next thing I'm using is crystal flash. I'm using gold and copper. Take two pieces, one of each color. You can clip them out to keep them from fraying. I double them over. Start them again behind the eyes there. Two wraps to lock it in. Then I'm gonna take this piece, fold it back over in front of the eyes. Hold that down. Then you want to wrap three times in front of the eyes there and then come back behind the eyes. And you can clip that. The next thing I use is micro rabbit strips. I'm using dark brown. I'll take these and cut them about an inch, inch and a half long. You can wet it, get it to stick out. But what I do is I start it on the side of the rattle there. I'll just lay the flat of the hide on the rattle and I'll start by wrapping the hide or the strip to the side of the rattle. That holds it in place. Then I'll flip it and I'll grab another one.
I don't want to come out too far past the, the hook bend, probably about an inch, inch and a half. You don't want your rabbit strips to foul on the hook. So I'll start that one again on the side of the rattle. Bring it just to the end of the rattle. Then I'll take those and pinch them together. And then bring my thread behind the eyes. And I'll do two loose wraps on top of that between the rattle and the eyes. And then I'll cinch down. And that'll lock the rabbit in place. Clean that back up, come back down. Next thing I'm using is cactus chenille in medium. This is root beer. You're gonna start it on top of your rattle, just behind the eyes. Lock that in three or four times. Then you're gonna take your chenille and wrap and palmer the chenille around the rattle. In front of the hook eye there, you wanna stop. Then you wanna start wrapping with bigger wraps back towards your thread. You can hold it there, bring your thread over behind the eye there. Wrap it two loose times. Third time you can cinch it down. You're gonna bring your chenille back to lock that chenille in. Two loose wraps, cinch it down, and then you're gonna cut that off right at the eyes. Next thing I'm using is hairline thin fly foam. I use two millimeter. I cut my foam into strips and cut a blunt point and tip on the end. All right, to get the foam on here, you're gonna take the gap in your point, put it right there over your hook and your eyes. You're gonna take that, pinch it down with your fingers and your other hand, loosely wrap that thread over back behind the eyes. Making sure that it's right behind the eyes. Do two loose wraps over, and then you can kind of give it a pinch here and pull down and cinch it tight, making sure that your eyes are exposed. You're gonna go over that three times, cinching a little harder every time, making sure that your foam's in place and it's not wiggling around. All right, that locks your foam in place and you can start to make the shell of the crayfish. All right, the next step, you're gonna pull the foam back out of the way of the hook and then you're gonna pull your thread over in front of the rattle and you can start to feel the rattle there, the back of the rattle. And you want that thread to kind of come in and lock behind the, th the rattle there. You can go over once, then your thread's in place. You're gonna pull your foam back, push down on it again with your other hand Bring that thread over, loosely wrap two times, pull it tight, then give it a third wrap, hold it in place. For the legs, I'm using Grizzly Micro Legs in fluorescent orange. I'll take them, and cut them in half, and I'll take about two legs each. for the sides, for each side. Pinch those, bring them in and bring it right beside the foam, just underneath the foam there. Lock it in pretty tight, those will move around on you. And you can let those go. 
Let your thread hang. Grab two more. And do the same thing on the other side. extra wraps all right we're almost finished with the body of the craw next thing we're going to do is pull the foam back again run the thread back up and over the top of the hook and bring it in just behind the eye of the hook you can wrap it one time there then you're going to bring your foam back press it down again wrap two Loose wraps there, cinch it down, third wrap, fourth wrap, fifth wrap, and pull it down. Then you're going to pull that foam back, and you're going to wrap your thread a couple times there, pull that back. Then you can grab your scissors, lay them on there, and chop it off right at the eye. I'm gonna grab my whip finisher. Finish it off right here by the eye. One, two, three, four. Clip that off there. Next thing I take, Loon UV Clear. I use the flow. I'm gonna put a drop right where I finish my thread. Next, you're gonna need your Spawn 60 degree micro jig shank in the 15 millimeter. You're also going to need your slotted tungsten beads. You can use 3.8, 4.6, or 5.5. Today I'm going to use 5.5. Take those, add them to your shank. Put your shank on the hook. Pop your hook out of the vise. Take the shank, lock it into the vise. You're ready to start your thread. You're going to take your thread, start it on the shank, clip off your excess, then you want to take the bead and slide it back from the end of the shank there. Then you're gonna take the thread and go over the bead where the slot is. See, I have my slot there. You're gonna run the thread in the slot of the bead, over the bead, and wrap a couple of times in front of the bead there by the eye of the hook. Then come back over the slot again, and you can crisscross Cross that slot, locking it in. Then your bead should stay back on the hook there. You don't want it riding up here. That's the trick to this crayfish is keeping the tungsten bead back on the shank and that keeps the crayfish kind of floating down in a natural defensive position. If you were to move the bead out to the eye, the crayfish stands straight up like that. Some people like to fish it that way. I prefer to keep the bead back like that. Next, you want to grab some lead wire. You can use 0 0.15, 0.20. Grab your lead wire. Sit it on top of the hook there, or the shank rather. Wrap it back and then I take the lead and wrap it back towards the tungsten bead four or five times. Then I lock that lead in with my thread. Put 
pinch that off. And you're ready for your next step. I'm gonna grab some more cactus chenille and medium. Start that right beside where you have the shank locked in the vise. You're gonna leave your thread hanging at the jaws of your vise. And then you're gonna wrap one time palmer. Then you're gonna go over the slot in the bead, just like you did with the thread, wrap underneath where the eye is, and then come back over the slot one time around behind the bead. And then on the top, you're gonna stop and then come down tight with your thread two times, three times, and then lock that chenille in two wraps and trim. You're gonna grab the excess fly foam that you had. Lay it down on the shank, the top. Don't cover up your eyes. You wanna make sure that you leave enough room between the foam and the body and the foam and the tail so that the shank can move and the hook can float up. If you move your foam too far forward, it'll pinch your hook down, you'll lose your action. If you move it too far back, obviously it'll move, but you can't get the foam on there right. If you need to, you can trim away some of the excess chenille right there beside the eye. What you're gonna do is put the foam on there and then catch it with the smallest amount of foam that you think you can get away with. Two light wraps on there and then cinch it down hard with the third. And you're gonna pull the foam back, run it over, and then you're gonna start to make the tail segments by wrapping each little section three times. Pull it back, do one more little section right behind the tungsten bead. Gonna wrap that section three times, two, three. What I like to do is pull this foam tail back and then wrap it two more times right behind the tungsten bead just to lock my thread in and then leave my thread hanging. And then you're on to the next step. For the next step, we're gonna cut the gap in the tail to allow the eye of the shank to pop through. One of my tricks on how I do this is I'll pull the foam to the side of the shank, find out where it's gonna pop through, and then I'll just give myself a little mark there to kind of show where I need to cut the V. So then I cut the V there, you can see it. And I'll leave the tip of the V in and pop that part out. Then you're ready to wrap your thread back on there. So for this part, I pull the tail back again. I bring my thread up and over and lock it into that slot. I'll wrap one good time right there in front of the tungsten bead. I'll bring my foam back over and I'll take the gap in my foam and put it right where the eye is and that should hold it in place. Then you're gonna take with your fingers, you're gonna push that down, hold it in place, come over and wrap with your thread loosely 
And if you need to flare that foam back out, you can by pushing up like that. And then that will flare your tail out. And then you wrap it a couple more times. And that should be the last step before you whip finish. You're gonna grab your whip finisher and finish right there where you just wrapped your thread. To finish, hit it with your flow right where you finished the thread. And that's it. The crayfish.